Banks gets free. And now he's taken down. Who else? Stepping up in the pocket. Fires has a wide open Gaskin. Touchdown, Dolphins. What's up, guys? I'm your host, Joanna Torres, and welcome to a brand new episode of Dolphins Today, coming to you from the Baptist Health Studios in Miami Gardens. And guess what? We're only two days away from the last preseason game of the season, and it's against the Cincinnati Bengals. While we're on the heels of regular football season, we're also in full swing of Virgo season. So are there any Virgos out there? Well, that made us wonder, what are the zodiac signs of our team? Check this never-before-seen Camp Cam. Zodiac sign. I'm a Voigo. Scorpio. Oh, I'm a Leo, the best in the nation. Virgo. What are you? What are, what are you? S Sagittarius. What y'all think? No, I, ain't, I ain't gonna do me. Leo gang, August 11th. You already know, real line. Sagittarius. <laughs> Good Taurus. I'm an Aries, the best sign ever. An Aries, the Ram, baby. What's better than an Aries? I have to say my favorite zodiac sign is Capricorn, but that's because I'm a Capricorn, so shout out to all the Capricorns out there. But Travis, what's your zodiac sign? I'm gonna go with Scorpio as my favorite because I learned today that I'm a, well, I didn't learn today I'm a Scorpio, but I learned what being a Scorpio is all about. I have some disagreements though with the personality traits that come with that, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Okay, I can understand that. <laughs> well, our very own Travis Winfield is in the house with us here today, and he's going to break down what we can expect to see this Sunday. But Travis, before we get into the X's and O's of all that, we first want to ask you, we know you're moving all the way from Washington, so how's your move coming along? Almost complete. It's been like a year-long process now for me with my wife living in the West Coast and being kind of bi-coastal, but I have a 44-hour drive ahead of me coming up next week, so keep me in your thoughts on that drive next week. We definitely will, so I think my tip would be lots of podcasts, not your own, just different ones. Plenty right? of podcasts, absolutely. <laughs> Love to see it. All right, well, how should the Dolphin fans feel coming off of a win against Atlanta last week? I have to say, a win is always an amazing feeling. Exactly. Always good to get a win, always good for the, the players and the coaches to celebrate a victory and, and get that 24-hour rule where it feels good to have the win and think about that game and then move on to the next one. But when it comes to exhibition football, it's not about the results in the end of the scoreboard. It's about the play-to-play -play consistency and getting valuable reps for guys and, and just finding out who's going to be on the 53-man roster and what this team's going to look like. So having preseason this year was a great chance to get a better look at our guys. And I thought it started with the first-team offense and especially those drives throughout the course of preseason from Tua Tungavailoa and that first-team offense. I mean, the drive lengths for Tua and the first team was 80, 60, 70 yards and two touchdowns in that first half of the game. And he also completes eight consecutive passes in that game as well. So definitely some consistency from the passing game, spreading the ball around, seeing QB1 look good is always a good sight for you. And then the playmakers, making plays after the catch. We saw Miles Gaskin had a bunch of yards, 71 yards from scrimmage in that first half, two TDs, big day for him. We saw Mike Gesicki make another big play down the field from Tua. And then defensively, the aggressiveness. you got to love what Brian Flores and Josh Boyer and this defense does to really turn the heat up on opposing quarterbacks, even in an exhibition game. And the Falcons saw plenty of that. We saw Sam Egwavon had four sacks on the night. The defense allowed just three points in that first half, but Egwavon, the four sacks, all kinds of guys creating pressure on that Falcons offense and, and getting after them. And just having 11 men executing on a play-by-play -play basis, I thought we saw plenty of that, and that's how you get yourself to a 37-17 win. Love to see that score, definitely. Well, what can we expect to see in the last preseason game of the season against the Cincinnati Bengals? Yeah, so for the longest time, it was always the fourth game was the, the final game of the preseason, and that's no longer the case. So it's kind of a bit of a learning curve here for everyone involved, coaches, players, people like me that cover this game obsessively. We have to learn these new, these new uh, schedule changes in the preseason. So... Brian Flores actually said in his press conference earlier on Thursday that we'd see most of the ones and the starters not playing in this game. That includes quarterback Tua Tungavailoa. So plenty of ball caps and sunflower seeds on the sideline, which is always a good sight when you see your guys healthy and ready to go into the regular season. But there's also plenty of guys out there trying to take advantage of that last opportunity to make a lasting impression on their coaches, on the fans around here, to see who makes that 53-man roster. And then just the urgency of the final preseason game is one of my favorite things because, you know, I had the post-game show with Seth and OJ from the Fish Tank podcast, and they're not the biggest fans of preseason football, but I love it because you get a chance to look at these guys that are trying to make that last impression on their coaching staff and on their teammates and the fans and make their dream come true with this last chance. So we get a chance to take a look at that Sunday in Cincinnati. 
Absolutely. They play hard, so it's great, right? But we're just excited that football season Absolutely. is here all together. Well, thank you, Travis. There sure is a lot to look forward to, and I can't wait for game day. In this exclusive clip from the Fish Tank, Channing Crowder brings all the energy while talking about the I Am Athlete podcast. You don't want to miss this sneak peek, so stay tuned. You know, what are some of the best shows you guys have had, some of the stories you haven't told yet? You know what I mean? And, and are you having fun doing it? Oh, I go backwards because it's, it's, it's fun as I'll get up. Because like y'all know, the production, that, that takes hours. The whole thing, like we, we have an hour episode. We're there for four hours, three and a half, four hours do an hour oh, We episode. don't have that kind of budget. <laughs> we, we run a little more lean than me. <laughs> got that beat marsh budget. We, uh, we, we running. <laughs> but but we'll, we'll be there. And we'll, we'll sometimes do multiple episodes in a, in a day. And it started... We're really like all of us are friends. Like me and B. Marsh have been cool since he played for the Dolphins. Me and Asia flew up to Chicago. He was with the Bears and went to his baby shower. Like me and B. Marsh were tight. The the genesis of I Am Athlete is me, B. Marshall, sitting in B. Marshall's pool with our feet in the water, and we're just talking about stuff like you know finances, investments, kids, raising kids. Our kids are in the pool playing together, so we're talking about raising kids and just. So many different topics, and B was like, man, we should film this. Absolutely. But it was really just us saying, hey, man, let's show the people what we do when we're sitting around in our backyards. And got the cameras, and B Marshall, a House of Athlete, the, just what he's doing on that business side. He's a very intelligent dude. I thought it was going to be a couple GoPros sitting on the table, walk in, and it's oh, seven people nice. standing around. And it just kept growing and growing. You can listen to a new episode of the Fish Tank Podcast every Tuesday on your favorite streaming service and on WFOR every Saturday night at 7.30. Well, that's a wrap for this episode. We'll see you right back here on Tuesday, giving you never-before-seen clips of the last preseason game of the season. Go Dolphins!